Somebody say, thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Amen. You can be seated. Here comes the rain. Amen. <laughs> yes. Woo, it's coming down. Amen. Well, let's not delay. Let's go to the book of Acts chapter number 2. Acts chapter number 2. When you get there, say, I'm near. Hmm. We're going to look at verse number 4. The Bible says, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. I want to minister tonight on the title, Living on Full. Living on Full. Amen. Somebody say full. Look at your other neighbor and say, God wants me full. Full of him. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> gotta, gotta be uh, accurate. Amen. Father, we just thank you tonight for the awesome opportunity to minister your word. And Father, I ask that you will give me your words, your words of wisdom and knowledge and understanding. Revelation knowledge, Father. God, let it flow freely through this place. From the front to the back, Father, I ask that you will use this word, Father God, to speak into lives, into situations, into circumstances. Father God, I ask that it not just be information, but I pray for impartation of your spirit to bring the grace of God. So now and be hearers of the word, we can become doers of the word. So Holy Spirit, have your way in this place, in Jesus' mighty name. If you believe it, say amen. I wrote this down. To live a successful Christian life, you have to live a life that is spiritually full. The whole church age was started when a group of people were sitting in the upper room and waiting, and then suddenly they were all invaded by the power of the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit not only filled the place, he also filled them, and then they began to move in the mandate of God. I want you to know that Jesus came that we can live life, but not just live life, but live life to the fullest. Amen? Pull up John 10.10. 10. Familiar scripture, the Bible says the thief comes in only in order to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I come that they may have and enjoy life and have it in abundance to the full until it overflows. Amen? Now, some of you guys, amen, that just became Christians, amen, I want to encourage you to stick with God. Amen? Don't give up. Don't, give up. don't grow weary in well-doing. Keep going forward with, with God Almighty. Amen? As you continue with God, you will notice that there will be levels of consecration in your life where God begins to uh, uh, bring you closer to him, and you'll begin to find out that there's things that were allowable in one season that are not allowed in the next season, amen? And it's not because God is trying to empty your life. On the contrary, he's actually trying to fill your life, amen? So a lot of times when we go through pruning, amen, or God moving things out of our life, it's not that he's trying to reduce us to nothing. He's just making room for his mighty presence to come into his life. I am enjoying another level of presence in, in, in my life with God, amen, this year greater than I did last year, amen. And, and, and what happens is, amen, eventually you begin to grow up spiritually. You're not just asking God for things, amen. You begin to, once you realize that, all right, the, the thrill of the car is gone, the thrill of the house, and all this other stuff is gone, then you begin to ask God, God, I want more of you, amen. I want more of your presence. I want more of your glory in my life. When you begin to realize that your satisfaction and your happiness is not found in material things or positions or titles or ministry, you realize that your happiness is found in the person of Jesus Christ and the presence of God himself. You begin to become a God chaser, amen? And then when you begin to become a God chaser, amen, you'll notice a greater level of the presence of God will begin to come and then begin to invade your life, amen? Then you realize that your life is not based on situations and circumstances, but on the contrary, your life is based on who's in your life. Amen. It's not based on who left your life. As long as God is in your life, you're all right. Amen. Somebody say we're going to another level. Have you ever driven a car with an empty tank? Have you ever driven a car with a full tank? What's the difference? Expectation. 
On an empty tank, you know that you will not be able to go far, so you will not be able to enjoy the ride fully. You are not looking for destination. You are looking for a gas station. <laughs> you ever been there like you, praying that you make it, amen? Lord, stretch this gas, amen? Now, on a full tank, you're at ease, amen? You're just cruising, amen? You're enjoying the ride. You're not even concerned about gas, amen? As a matter of fact, you're flying back by gas stations, and you're not looking at them, amen, because your car is on F, amen? You don't even flip out when the road begins to make a detour because you know you have enough fuel to take in the tank to complete your trip, amen? Listen, God wants you to have your life full of him because when your life is full of him, it produces a high expectation, amen, that the move of God is going to come into your life, that you're not going to break down in life. On the contrary, you're going to go forward in your life, and you're going to make it to the destination that God has for you. Now, pull up this familiar scripture that we quote after every service. Pull up Ephesians 3, but we're going to read verse 19 before 20. And the Bible says, and you know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. And then it says, now unto him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or think according to the power that works in us. Amen. So when you're full of God, you have a high expectation that God is going to move in your life. Amen. People that don't have a lot of God in them. Amen. They're not expecting the move of God. Amen. They're expecting business to just to be normal. And, and they're not expecting, they're not making a demand on the presence of God. Amen. But when you're full of God, now you're a recipient of Ephesians 3, uh, 320. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you can ask or think. According to what? According to the power that's working in you. Let me ask you tonight, what's working on the inside of you? Amen. Is it the power of God? Um, is it your earthly desires? Amen. Is it the dictates of the Holy Spirit? Or is it your own nature? Amen. What's working on the inside of you? Because what's working on the inside of you is going to have a direct effect. What's going to show up in your life. Amen. Are you expecting bad to show up in your life? Then bad's going to show up. Are you expecting good to show up in your life? Then good is going to show up. Amen. But the goodness comes from the goodness of God that's dwelling on the inside of you. Somebody say he's a good God. Exceedingly, abundantly, above all that I can ask or think, according to the power that works in us. Amen. Man, we've been having some powerful prayer up in here. I encourage you guys, if you can make it, please come. Yesterday was powerful, and today was powerful. But these last two days, I've been walking out with a, a tangible presence of God on my life, amen, because we've been pressing in, we've been breaking through the flesh, we've been breaking through a, 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 a demonic strongholds trying to block the move of God, and what I notice is we're penetrating atmospheres, amen, and we can feel a greater uh, presence of God coming in this place, guess what, with less people, amen, all you need is a few folks, amen, to be in agreement, amen, to begin to press into the things of God, and you activate the presence of God to come into the place, amen. Look at your name and say, I don't need a, a lot of folks. I just need a few folks, amen, to be in agreement with me, amen. All I need is one brother, one sister to touch and agree. I don't need the crowd, amen. I just need agreement. <laughs> Ephesians 5.18, it says, be not drunk with wine. Anybody ever been drunk with wine? What happens when you're drunk with wine? You come under the wine's influence. Anybody ever been pulled over for a DUI? Anybody ever went through the sobriety test on the road? Anybody ever failed the test? They took me in, amen, because they said you got too much alcohol in you, and now it's no longer you that's in control. Now you're under the influence of what's inside of you, amen? So the Lord said, don't be drunk with wine, where is excess, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Listen, a lot of the church is distracted with the presence of evil spirits and how to get rid of them instead of being consumed with spiritual hunger to be full of the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you something. I'm going to tell you how to whip every devil. Amen. Start chasing the Holy Spirit. 
Don't worry about the, 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 all these other uh, marine spirits and Jezebel spirit and Leviathan spirit. Go after the Holy Spirit and no other spirit will be able to enter your life once the Holy Spirit begins to invade your life. Amen. I don't know about them other spirits, but I know the spirit that's on the inside of me. And that's the spirit that I'm going to pursue. And that's the spirit that I'm going to make room for in my life. So there's no other room for any other spirits to operate because I'm in pursuit of the Holy Spirit spirit somebody say I'm after the Holy Spirit I gotta share this with y'all where my phone at oh. check this scripture out Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. where is it at it's actually uh It's in uh, 2 Kings 9.37. This is Jehu prophesying what the Lord said about Jezebel. It says, Jezebel's corpse will be like manure on the surface of the ground in the plot of land at Jezreel, so that no one will be able to say, this is Jezebel. No, y'all ain't get that. This is the Lord speaking by his prophet Jehu. Jezebel's course will be like manure on the surface of the ground in the plot of the land at Jezreel so that no one be able to say this is Jezebel. Why are we trying to resurrect something that God wants dead? Let me ask you this. Let's you somebody say common sense. When a human dies... Amen. They have an eternal destination. They're not released into the earth atmosphere to possess another human. So Jezebel's spirit is not in the earth. Now, you might have people that have characteristics like Jezebel, but it ain't the Jezebel spirit. Amen. She is where she's supposed to be. Amen. And let's not resurrect something that God wants dead. Do you see Paul telling us to deal with Jezebel? Do you see Paul telling us to deal with Leviathan? You don't find it anywhere, do you? He didn't want us to be distracted by that. He's constantly trying to get us to get back to the power of the Holy Spirit. Now listen, when you're full of the Spirit, you'll be full of joy. Pull up Psalm 1611. If your joy level is low, that means your presence level is low. It says, you will show me the path of life. And in your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. So what you focus on, you will be full of. And what you eat, you will be full of. The enemy wants to wear us out spiritually. He does not want us to operate on full. He wants to always operate us to operate from a position of empty. Understand this, everything you do for God and for others should come from a place of overflow. Let me say it again. Everything you do for God and from others should come from the place of overflow. I don't minister from what I need. I minister from the place of overflow. If I begin to minister for what I need, I sit down and tap another brother to come on in and help me out. Amen? Because I've got, got to minister for the overflow because if I minister from what I need, then I get attacked and I don't have what it takes to sustain personal tax and overcome personal tax in my life. Amen? So when you minister, whether uh, to other people, amen, or, or ministry or one-on-one, or -on -one, you got to minister from a place of supernatural overflow that you have more than enough, not just enough. You shouldn't enter into ministry tired. Amen? You should be spiritually on fire, amen, living out of an overflow. David said, my cup runneth over, amen, an overflowing cup. So we don't move from the place of God and spending time with God until we find that place of overflow. A lot of us don't enter into overflow because we want a quick fix, amen. We just want to do a 20-minute devotional, amen. We don't want to add any fasting. We don't want to add any prayer. We don't want to tarry with the Lord and wait on the Lord. And Lord, I'm not going to leave until you strengthen me, until you refresh me, until you revive me, until you build me up on the inside. If I got to 
stay here one hour, two hours, three hours, whatever it takes. I'm not going to go back out with just bare necessities. I want to live my life from the overflow. It said they tarried in Jerusalem in the upper room till the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We don't tarry long enough and wait on the Lord. We get up because we want a quick fix. No, I'm going to wait on the Lord, amen. I'm not going to tarry. I'm not going to be in a rush. I'm going to be still, amen. Y'all don't bother me, man. I need a minute, amen. I've been getting in my flesh, amen. I've been getting short with people, amen. I've been, I've been not walking in the spirit. I need God to do something on the inside of me. I need to get to that place of living in the full, amen. Listen, I don't want to be a spiritual casualty. I don't want to be wiped out by the devil, amen. I want, I want to be able to take a licking and keep on ticking, amen. I want to show up today. I want to show up tomorrow. I want to show up next week. I want to show up next year. I want to show up five years from now. I want to be like the everlasting bunny. I never run out of energy. Look at your name and say, God didn't save you for you to run out of energy. For you to break down like a car with no gas, amen. God is a God of surplus. God is a God of abundance, amen. God is a God of strength and renewal, amen. And you can't tap out the resources of almighty God. You just got to link up with him. Somebody say, fill it up. Begin to pray it even right now. Father, fill me. Fill me with your spirit. Fill me, Father. Fill me to overflow. I don't want, to, I want my flesh to get back on top. I don't want my old thinking to get back on top. I don't want my emotions to get back on top. I don't want sadness to get back on top. I don't want depression to get back on top. I don't want those things that I've overcome in the past to begin to get back on top and begin to saturate, to begin to sap my spiritual life. I, I want to stay in the overflow. Basically saying, before you take care of other people's spiritual life, you have to take care of your spiritual life. Make sure you have more things adding to your spiritual life than things depleting your spiritual life. Let me say it again. Make sure you have more things adding to your spiritual life than the depleting your spiritual life. Now listen to this. The Bible has a lot to say about guarding our spiritual condition. Pull up Proverbs 4.23. Looks at your name and says, it's up to you to guard your spiritual condition. It says, so above all, 423, guard the affections of your heart, for they affect all who you are. Pay attention to the welfare of your innermost being, for from there flows the wellsprings of life. So above all, that means above uh, guarding anything else. I got to guard myself, amen? Of course, I'm, I'm a pastor, and I got to oversee people and, 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 and the ministry and, and leaders and this and that, amen? But I can't get consumed with looking at everybody else and not look at myself. I can't be consumed with, with just getting messages to minister to y'all without getting messages to minister back to me, amen? I, I can't come in here trying to build you up Amen. And not be concerned, am I built up or not? Amen. I, I got above all things, I have to guard the affections of my heart, my innermost being, what's going on in my core being. Amen. In my holies of holies places, what's going on with you, Pastor Tony? Look at your name. Say, don't look at me. Look at yourself. By looking at everybody else, look at yourself. Guard yourself. Let each man work out his own salvation with fear and trembling. Amen. Don't worry about me. Worry about yourself. You got to stand before God one day. You got to get things right before God one day. Don't worry about me. I got to stand before him too. Notice, guard your heart. You have to be careful what you let into your heart. 
That's why I said, ladies, be careful what you fall in love with. Because you're letting somebody into your heart. And the heart can be a deceitful thing. Lead us in ways that are not of God. So you got to be careful who and what you give your heart to. You got to come more with a, a cheap ring and a hoopty for me to give you my heart. You better come correct than just a, a steak dinner, amen, before I give you my heart, amen. I better see that, that you're somebody, amen, that has a relationship with God Almighty. Somebody that's not just concerned about me, but you got your right before God Almighty. Amen? Look at your neighbor and say, I'm not going to be in a rush. Notice, it's your responsibility to pay attention to your spiritual life. Nobody knows you better than you. Let me say it again. Nobody knows you better than you. Listen, don't be moved by people's smiles because people use smiles to cover up conditions. A smile is not a reflection of a spiritual condition. Sometimes it's a cover-up of a negative spiritual condition. So don't, don't judge stuff by smiles. What is your spiritual condition? Are you guarding yourself? What's coming out of your life? Here's one. You know how you know what's in your, inside of you? By what's coming out of your mouth. Monitor your mouth for the next 48 hours, and that will tell you what's on the inside of you. Does negativity, doubt, unbelief come out of you? Then that's what's inside of you. Hatred, anger, amen, just cutting and tearing people down, that's what's inside of you. Because Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak, amen. The mouth is a reflection of what's inside your heart. What, what, what happens when life squeezes you? What comes out? We can control sometimes what comes out of our mouth, but the what's really in our mouth, in our heart, is when life squeezes us and what comes out, amen, subconsciously, that tells us what's really in our heart. Somebody say, guard yourself. Pull up Galatians 6 1. Brothers, if anyone is caught in any sin, you who are spiritual, that is, who are responsive to the guidance of the Spirit, are to restore such a person in the spirit of gentleness, not with a sense of superiority or self-righteousness. Then it says, keeping a watchful eye on yourself so that you are not tempted as well. So when you see someone fall, it shouldn't produce pride. It should produce humility. It should get you to begin not to look at their fall, but actually begin to watch yourself, realizing that it could happen to you. So when you see somebody fall, it shouldn't be like, ah, ha, ha, I'm the man. Amen. It should be like, man, that could happen to me. I better make sure I'm not slipping. I'm not dipping. I'm not tripping. Amen. Because, I mean, I mean, we've seen some stuff just happen recently in the body of Christ, but we don't judge those men. We are actually praying for them, believing, because that could happen to any one of us. Keeping a watchful eye on yourself so that you are not tempted as well. Then pull up 1 Timothy 4.16. Again, play, pay close attention to yourself. Concentrate on your personal development and to your teaching. Persevere in these things. Hold to them. For as you do this, you ensure salvation both for yourself and for those who hear you. You want me to tell me how you keep out of drama? Look at yourself. Be consumed with your personal development. Be consumed about your personal growth. I remember I, before I got in this, this, this position here, amen, I worked in the back. <laughs> and I used to hear stuff that I'm like, I didn't even know that happened. Because, one, I'm not looking to get in the gossip club. There was no social media back then. 
But if it was, I wouldn't be on there uh, 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 coasting or uh, uh, going through social media to find out the latest gossip. Amen. I was too consumed and still consumed with what God is doing in my life. Amen. That, that, that I don't have time to, to be concerned about who's who, who's doing what, who, who's, who's, who's uh, coming against who and all this. Amen. I'm too consumed about my personal development. Amen. But you know where that comes from? It comes when you have a relationship with God. When you don't have a relationship with God, you're easily distracted. But when you have a relationship with God, you'll be like, whoo over here. Amen. I'm not working over there. Over here, buddy. Amen. Let, let's, let's get back to business. Let's get back to focusing on you. Let's get back to getting this stuff right that I showed you. Amen. Let's get, let's get back to these, these issues you got. Don't worry about their issues. Let's just work on your issues. Or some of us are just concerned about everybody else's issue. We miss personal development on ourselves. Amen. Some of the most jacked up people I've seen leave this ministry is the one that coasts through the program, never focus on themselves, focus on everybody else, get up, do a marvelous speech, amen, from the platform, but walk right out the door and fall flat on their face because they never worked on themselves. They worked on everybody else, picking, taking the, the log out of everybody else's eye, but never pulled it out of their eye. And get up and do the best speech, amen, to sound like the president, amen, and blow the whole deal when you walk out, amen. Because they never worked on themselves. Paul said, I buffet my body. I discipline myself. I tell myself, no, I am strict with my life. I am strict with, with, with who I associate with. I am strict with what I allow to come into my life. And then he said this, lest I preach to others and I myself be a castaway. Amen. So it's not about the preaching. It's about checking yourself to make sure that if you get tested on what you've been preaching, you don't fill the test. Now let me say this. Me and Brother Philip was talking about this today. And I, I was sharing with Brother Philo. I said, I didn't realize until the year of the pandemic how uh, sitting under Bishop Fur all those years, the deposit that was being made into my life, it wasn't until the pandemic showed up that I realized the deposit that was made in my life. And this is what I told Brother Phil. I said, strong preaching produces strong people. There was no sugar coat. There was no politically correct. There was no, let me consider how they feel about it. No, it was just raw, unadulterated truth. Amen. Whether it stepped on your toes, whether it got you offended or not. Amen. If you were able to bear it, able to stick with it. Amen. It produced a strong spiritual stamina in your life. But we don't want strong preaching. We want weak, nice, cake-filled ice cream preaching to make us feel good, but when hell shows up, you have no backbone. I was sharing with him, uh, you know, talking to our, 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 our leaders. They're like, man, what you going to do? I'm like, what am I going to do? What are you talking about what I'm going to do? We're going to keep the church open. I didn't open the church. I'm not going to close the church. And listen, Jesus helped me when I was down. And now he put me in charge of his mission, and now I'm supposed to close the doors when they try and attack his church? I'm supposed to fold and buckle and cave and give in, amen, when it's all on the line? What an opportunity to demonstrate what we really say we believe, amen, that now we get to see, was this just some little sermon? Was this some little Sunday thing you did just to check the box for conscience sake? Or was this really your life, amen? Were you really willing to lay your life down for Christ? Were you really willing to go to jail? Were you really willing to die? What were you really willing? Where are the disciples? They tried to stop the disciples from preaching, and they said, we will not stop preaching in that name. Amen. You can throw us in prison. You will not ever shut us up. So endure solid 
strong, raw teaching because it's making you strong. It's not making you don't realize until all hell breaks out. And when everybody else is falling by the wayside and the dust is clear, you'll be standing near. Amen. No fear of man. No fear of situation. You only fear God. I'm like, Lord, if you guys buckle in with a pandemic, imagine uh, some real serious stuff break out. No, I said, Lord, I don't want to just say I'm a Christian or preach I believe. I want to, when hell shows up, I want my life to exemplify what I said I believe. I want you pulling up YouTube and I'm, I'm preaching to an empty church. How y'all doing? Prayerfully, one of these days, this thing will all blow over and we can all come back to church. But Pastor Tone, didn't you tell us that Jesus is a healer? Why are you bound down to something that Jesus gave us authority over? Why are you closing the church down now? I thought you said Jesus was a healer. Why are you shutting the church down for sickness, something he defeated? I thought you believed this. Well, you know, I'm friends with the governor, so I don't want to breach our relationship. There's only one relationship I'm concerned about, the Lord Jesus Christ. Governor, I'm sorry, man. I'm not going to get messed up with Jesus because of my relationship with you. I'd rather lose my relationship with you than, than, than please him. This is what it's going to take in these last days, guys. Hocus pocus is not going to work. Buckets is not going to work. Showtime services is not going to work. Coming to a service and going, uh, coming here, bucking around, all around and then going outside the church, amen, and buckling for Christi for Christ, amen, is not going to work anymore. Where were we at? <laughs> strong preaching, yeah. Somebody say strong preaching produces strong people. Weak preaching produces weak people. Pay close attention to yourself. Concentrate on your personal development and to your teaching. Persevere these things. Hold to them. As you do this, you will ensure your salvation. Somebody say, pay close attention to yourself. You're always changing, either for the good or the bad. Am I getting on fire or is my fire going out? You're changing right now. Just which way are you going? Everybody's changing right now. What direction are you going, though? Are you getting more on fire or are you regressing? How do I stay on full? Before I talk about that, I want to talk about this thing called impartation. You hear me pray it over our prayers, but you need to understand the spiritual significance of it. Impartation is the spiritual transfer that takes place through relationship. Impartation is to transfer something from one to another. You must understand that anything or anyone you come into contact with has the ability to impart what is inside of them into your life. This is why as a Christian, we have to have boundaries. Because we have to be careful who and what we're allowing to impart into our lives. Pull up 1 Corinthians 15.33. It says, do not be so deceived and misled. Evil companionships, communion, and associations corrupt and deprave good manners, morals, and character. Notice, it says, bad communion communion and association will corrupt you and deprave, even though you can be a good guy or a good gal, amen, being around somebody that's evil will corrupt you. What is it? It's their impartation is getting on the inside of you. Sometimes we feel empty because we are full. We are full, but we're full of the wrong things that came through wrong associations. Always ask yourself, is this relationship taking me closer to God or away from God? Is this relationship making me my fire for God go stronger or is it putting my fire out? 
What is this music doing for my spiritual life? What is this TV show doing for my spiritual life? What is this movie doing for my spiritual life? you got to begin to monitor anything that's imparting into your life. Anything that your eyes are looking on. Anything that your ears are hearing. That is all places of impartation. What is being imparted into my life? What am I full of? What am I allowing to fill my life up? Amen. You're being full of something. It's just what you're allowing to impart into your life. Look at your name and say, what are you full of? Always ask yourself, is this relationship taking me closer to God or away from God? What is this music doing for my life? I'm telling you, I listen to a song. If it don't bear a win, I turn that mess off. I'm not listening to that. And I ain't listening to it just for the beat. Because sometimes it's not stimulating your spiritual life. It's stimulating your old nature. What's this TV show doing? What is it doing? Do I have to feel like I got to pray for an extra hour to get back to a spiritual place? Or after a TV show, do I feel like I've been knocked, I lost my position in that spiritual place? What is this movie doing, amen? I, t- I told the Lord the other day, I said, Lord, I mean, because sometimes you're in a conversation, somebody says something, you respond, and then you get that check in the spirit. And I'm like, Lord, I said, Lord, I will let go of any relationship you want me to let go. I will talk to nobody, <laughs> you know, as far as phone calls. Well, I hate being on the phone, too. People can be on the phone for, I can't be on no phone for no hour. I, I mean, <laughs> people are like, can you call me? I'll be like, man. I know it's at least an hour, and I'm not the one to be on the phone for an hour just jib-jabbing, amen? I got a lot of other stuff I'd rather be doing than that, amen? But some people just la, 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 yapping, and the Bible says, out of the multitude of words, sin is not lacking. Man, don't you got a hobby? You got a gym membership? Go find something to do. Talk to this person, and you can't get this person. You jump to this person, and you jump to this person. All you're trying to do is find out what's going on in folks' lives. Listen to this. If you want something not share with people, you better make sure, because whoever you share with, whoever their circle is, they're going to share with their circle. So you got to be careful, and, and when somebody says to you, I probably shouldn't, but I'll tell you anyways. <laughs> if they breach the person that told them trust, they're going to breach your trust too. So you're going to say something, be like, oh, don't tell nobody this. They're going to use the same thing on the other end. Hey, I just, I'm going to say something, but don't say nothing, amen? Don't tell Pastor Tone I shared this with you. He shared it with me, but don't tell him I shared it with you. Pull up 2 Corinthians 6.14. I got, I got people on a, like, a waiting list. I said, I'll get to you when I can. I'll get to you when I can. And I just got to be psychologically and spiritually ready to talk for half an hour, hour. If I'm not there, I don't do it. <laughs> if it's an emergency, all right, I'll come see you, man. All right, listen to this. Don't continue to team up with unbelievers in mismatch alliances. For what partnership is there between righteousness and rebellion? Who could mingle light with darkness? What harmony can there be between Christ and Satan? Or what does a believer have in common with an unbeliever? What friendship does God's temple have with demons? For indeed we are the temple of the living God, just as God has said, I will make my home in them. And walk among them. I will be their God and they will be my people. For this reason, come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Look at your day and say, you have to do that. God's not going to separate you. You have to separate yourself. But Pastor Tom, I hurt their feelings. Let, let the chips fall. You know, I'm finding out when you make a stand for Christ, people don't... Uh, 
You may hurt their feelings, but they respect you. They'd be like, he's, he's the real deal. He's willing to walk away from stuff. He's seen us in here smoking and drinking, amen, and I know that he don't come around no more. And they know, they connect it. No, he's real. He's real. His actions are telling it. Why y'all get quiet on that one? <laughs> yeah. Listen, every time I preach, I'm in somebody's business. Every time. Every time. Listen, I, we're not just preaching sermon here. This is prophetic utterance. So every time I'm preaching, I'm in somebody's business. They maybe look straight ahead. You won't know who they are, but I'm in somebody's business. I'm in somebody's house. I'm at some, some thing they were at this past weekend. I'm at something they're planning to go this weekend. I'm in the business. Just look straight ahead and nobody will know that I'm talking about you. I don't even know. I don't even know. I don't know. I'm just preaching. What does God's friendship, does God's temple have with demons? For indeed we are the temple of the living God. Just as God said, I will make my home in them and walk among them. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. For this reason, come out. Get out of that house. Get out of that relationship and be separate, says the Lord. Touch nothing that is unclean. I will embrace you, and I will be a true father to you, and you will be my beloved sons and daughters, says the Lord Yahweh Almighty. You can't live a life in full, on full, be in agreement with things that, are, that God is not in agreement with. There are some relationships that you can no longer have in your life. Let me say that again. There are some relationships that you can no longer have in your life. As a Christian, one of the greatest things I had to do was cut off relationships that I knew were not right for my spiritual development. Not that I did not love them, not that I did not want the best for them, but it was hindering what God was doing in my life. Now listen, God will tell you, because when you get that check in your spirit, and you start feeling uneasy around certain things or certain people, you need to pay attention to that. Don't ignore it. Don't reason it away. No, God is telling you that for a reason. Amen. Sometimes things are layered, guys. Sometimes you're looking at one thing, but there's layers behind it, and God knows the layers. So when you get to check in your spirit, God is not looking at what you're looking at. He's looking at something behind it. And you have to trust that. I'm in this relationship, but I got a check in my spirit. He's saying the right things. He looks the right part, but something inside is telling me something's not right. You better listen to that, because if not, you get married and you wake up with the exorcist. Guys, too, you wake up. It's all smiles because the ceremony and getting dressed and all that stuff, is, it looks glorious. But when you wake up with no makeup, <laughs> my wife look good without makeup. I ain't, man. I ain't trying, man. She don't need makeup, all right? Shoot. I'm, 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 don't even try it. Don't even try it. I'm talking about the check, man. I'm not talking about makeup. Come on now. Start getting me detoured. Somebody say, listen to the check. And you won't have to worry about the makeup. All you have to do is say, I have to go. I have to leave now. What's wrong? Come back. No, no, I have to go now. What's wrong? Everything's here for you. No, no, I have to go. God, God is not here. I have to get out of here. I have, I have to go. What's, what's wrong? They look at you like you're crazy. Remember, people in the world don't know what you know. They don't feel what you feel. So never make decisions based on how they feel about the matter. Be led by your convictions. You're not walking in love. I thought you were a Christian. 
You can't fellowship with the father while living in a hog pen. You have to come out from among them. Then the father will receive you. Notice that daddy did not come to the hog pen. He stayed at the house. He was looking for him, but he didn't go to that hog pen. He said, I'm not going to that hog pen. I got a robe for you. I got a ring for you. I got all this for you, but you got to come out of that to get this. And a lot of us will not get what God has for us until we come out of some stuff. And you're like, what's the holdup? Because you won't let go of stuff. God said, I can't give it to you while you got that, those, that, that relationship hanging on you. All right, real quick, things to make you full. First thing, spiritual hunger. Man, you got to get hungry. You don't go to a buffet unless you're hungry for it. Think of your favorite restaurant. You don't go there unless you're hungry for it. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Hunger attracts God. Spiritual hunger attracts the Holy Spirit. Because when you're hungry, you begin to pray and ask God to fill you up. Father, I want more of you. I want more of your presence, more of your glory. And this is a prayer that God will always answer. When you say, God, fill me, I want more of your spirit. Father, forgive me. Lord, I notice that there's other uh, appetites and affections rising up on, on, on the inside of me. And I need you. I want to crucify those. And I want you to ignite spiritual hunger on the inside of me. Father, make me hungry for your presence. Make me hungry for your word. Father, stir up spiritual hunger on the inside of me. You got to pray. You got to pray those prayers over your life. They're not just going to come. Next one, listening. Listening. You get full by what you listen to. What you listen to, you will be full of. Look what Jesus said in Mark 4, 23 to 25. Listening? It says, anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. Then he added, play close attention to what you hear. The closer you listen, the more understanding will be given. And you will receive even more. To those who listen to my teaching, more understanding will be given. But for those who are not listening, even what they, what little understanding they have will be taken away from them. Listen to things that feed your spiritual life. In the listening, God will give you understanding. In the listening, God will give you revelation. Make this listening a lifelong spiritual application. Because the day you stop listening will be the day you forget the wisdom and revelation you used to walk in. Let me say it again. Anybody that's backslide, guess why they backslide? They stop listening. They're not listening to the word anymore. And what you don't listen to, you won't do. He said be hearers of the word, not only hearers of the word, but doers of the word. So you only do what you listen, what you listen to. If you stop listening, you'll stop doing it. That's how every, every once in a while, if I notice, I'm, you know, you know we, there's a variety of stuff you can glean on and feed. But sometimes every once in a while, the Lord says, I want you to start listening back to some, uh, some simple, sim- simple stuff on faith. I want you to begin to build your faith back up. You've been, uh, that, 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 that area of your life, that revelation has dropped. And I want to elevate it back up and lift it back up. How do I elevate it? Pray and Listen. Begin to listen to it, and then it begins to jack that, that area back up. Then uh, things begin to come back to my remembrance, amen, weapons that I used in my past to whip the lion and the bear. Now, I, I, man, I could use that weapon now to whip this Goliath that's facing me now. But if you stop listening, you forget all the stuff that God did in the past. You only do what you hear. What are you listening to? Now, listen, I love praise and worship. And I mean, we, man, I probably listen to that in the car more than everything. But every once in a while, the Lord is like, whoa, whoa, uh, uh, a total saturation in my word. And all it is is the word, the word, the word, the word. And the flesh, the flesh will try to psych you out and be like, this is boring. Turn this down. No, it's not about what it's doing to my flesh. It's about what it's doing to my spirit, man. I'm not trying to uh, satisfy the flesh. I'm trying to build up my inner man. To he who has, more will be given. He that has not, 
even what he has will be taken away. I learned it in a faith home. Two hours of classes to, to build a foundation in my life. 8 o'clock to 10 o'clock. They do 8.30 to 10.30. So I know, amen, I try to listen, amen, to about two hours of word. Because I can't, matter of fact, I got to listen actually more than that to supersede, amen, that, that level, amen. So it's not just in the morning, amen, it's at night, amen. Ask my wife, I end the night with it, amen. It's a total saturation. I always got some going in my ears, amen. There's no dead space. There's no room for la-la land. There's no room for the mind games and my thoughts to begin to drift into la-la land. There's always something coming in for my thoughts to begin to garrison and to, and to grab, amen, to make sure I stay consistent and not be up and down in my spiritual walk because I got a continual steady flow of spiritual things coming into my life. Somebody said we got to get back to the basics sometimes. And man, when God checks you on that, it's so good. Like, man, Lord, I let that thing slip. Thank you so much. Let me, let me uh, revive that again. Listen to this. Whoever you give your ear to will control your life. Thank you, Lord. Confirmation. <laughs> Whoever you give your ear to will control your life. Amen. That's why the devil wants you to shut down the voice of your pastor and wants you to listen to a voice outside. Because if the voice is outside, you're going outside. If you stop listening to the voice inside, amen, you listen to something else, you'll eventually go outside. And listen, when I say that, guy, I'm not saying you guys just have to listen to me. <laughs> go listen. I don't listen to just me. Now, that last message I preached on the, uh, the ungodly uh, council, whoo, I listened to that thing like 10 times. I was like, oh, my God, Lord. But what the Lord showed me, he said, Tony, you expose a method of the enemy that's been going on in this house for years. He said, that pattern has been going. You just said, you, you, you bought it and preached the whole message on a strategy of the enemy that he's been doing to my people. In, I'm not sort of this, this is church, but other church, but I know for sure I've seen it play out in this church. Where they stop listening to the pastor, I listen to other counsel, and get sucked out of the will of God. Okay, just a couple other things. You can just write these down. Somebody say, I got to stay full, so I got to stay hungry. I got to watch what I'm listening to. Somebody say, I got to pray. I got to pray. Can't be on full and not pray. Got to pray. I got to pray to the Lord. Amen. Somebody say, worship. You got to worship the Lord. Amen. Come on. In your prayer time, you got to worship God. You got to say, hallelujah, Lord. I worship you. I bless you, Lord. I seek your face, Lord. I welcome your presence in this place. Father, I love you. I bless you. I welcome your presence. So the Lord's like, yes, finally. It's not just about you. Now it's about me. Now it's not me just ministering to you. Now finally, you're ministering to me. Acts 13 says when they fasted and prayed, they ministered to the Lord, and then the Lord spoke. Amen. When they begin to minister to the Lord. You want to hear God's voice? Begin to minister to him. Begin to praise him. And then you create that atmosphere. He comes in and then he speaks his word into your life. Uh, meditation. Got to meditate. Watch what your, uh, your, your mind is on during the day. Don't let your mind drift into la-la land. Find a scripture. We learned this in the faith home. We get a scripture, a memory verse, and roll it around in our head all day. Roll it around in our head all day. My God says, supply all my need according to his riches and glory. And I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And I'm renewing my mind to that scripture. So now I'm disciplining my, I'm, I'm actually learning to discipline my mind. I'm getting strong because a lot of us are strong spiritually, but we're not strong psychologically. And you need to be strong spirit, soul, and body. I might as well hit this one. A lot of y'all need to start working out. 
The Lord told me a, a few years ago, he said, you need to start working out. And I've been up, back tomorrow, I've been up and down with that command, but just lately we've been really hitting it. But what it does is, is spirit, soul, and body. You can't just take care of your spirit. You can't just take care of your intellect. You have to take care of your physical body. You got to begin to exercise. You're going to start feeling better about yourself. Amen. Well, I can't run, Pastor. Walk around the block. Matter of fact, walking is just as good as jogging, they say. So just take a walk around the block, do it like three times a week, and watch how better you feel about yourself. Drink more water. Leave the sodas. Don't eat sweets every night. I ain't never preached like this before. But the Lord told me it's spirit, soul, and body, amen? And this is what it is. The, the Lord said, Tone, if I make a demand on your life and all of a sudden, man, you got to start preaching like five days a week, amen, do you physically ready to do that? What if I launch you into worldwide ministry, you have to start traveling every week? Are you physically ready to do that? And I had to be honest with myself, wow, I'm getting tapped out just running this place. So let me, uh, let, let me uh, expand my capacity, amen. So if the Lord wants to add to it, I'm fine with it. Let's go, amen. And if I'm at a hotel, I'm going to find the gym in the hotel to continue my regimen. Amen. Amen. Stand to your feet.